G'day, Michael from Ironbark Game Studio, and welcome to the eighth tutorial in this series, which will be covering the texturing process in Substance Painter. This will include adding and editing materials, using masks and generators, and stamping on alpha details. By the end of it, you will have a fully textured character. All right, and jumping into Substance Painter. So from last time, we have baked our mesh maps. So if we go into our texture set settings and scroll down, we should see our mesh maps in here with the exception of the normal map and the ambient occlusion which we disabled here and we brought across into the layers and we manually added them in and then we did some clean up with these masks. Now we're going to start adding in the actual materials and colours to our character. So starting off we're going to do the skin and eyes. I'm going to add a new group to my layers and I'm going to call this one skin. I'm going to click on this little box to the right here and I'm going to unselect everything except for the eyes, head, and the body. So if I hold down Alt and then left click on the head, that'll deselect everything. And I'll just select the eyes and also the body. Just going to click back onto the folder here. And up here, I'm going to turn on this little eye icon. And that's going to hide geometry, which is not associated with this layer or group. So in the viewport, we can just see the, the head, the body, and the eyes there. We're going to add a material to this and I'm going to look into the smart materials. So this one here. And I'm going to find this creature skin alien blue. Then just going to drag this into the skin group there. Okay, it's going to look a little bit weird. It's kind of like partially see-through. We're going to fix that layer because there's an opacity channel that's been turned on. For now, we're going to right click on the skin folder here and we're going to add a black mask. And that's essentially going to hide everything. I'm then going to right click again on the skin group and right down the bottom, I'm going to add a color selection. And inside the color selection, we can pick a color. And this is gonna work on the ID mask that we created in Blender and then baked in Substance Painter. So if I click on pick color, we can see all of the ID colors that we created in Blender. And I'm gonna choose this blue uh, for the skin. So we only create an ID map just for the body. That's because there's quite a few different materials that we're going to apply to it. So I've added it to the, the fins there. We still need to add in the head uh, manually. So if we right click on the skin group again, and we're going to add a paint. And here we can manually select what parts of the mesh we want this material to be applied to. So we could come in here with the paint tool and manually paint on those areas, or we can come down to the polygon fill tool. The polygon fill tool is really useful because it allows you to select certain parts of the mesh. So we could either select tries, quads or faces, full meshes or UV chunks, which we want this material to be applied to, or we want this uh, mask to be applied to. So I'm gonna use the UV chunk fill, that's gonna be the easiest because the only thing that I want is the head. So hovering over the head, I'm just going to uh, left click and drag over the top of that. And then that's just going to apply the mask to the head there because we've got the UV chunk fill. The mesh fill would also work with this head as well because it's a separate mesh. Just to get rid of this visual, I'm gonna click back on the paintbrush tool and we're gonna have to start editing this uh, creature skin material. So let's just zoom in there and let's open up that creature skin group. So a smart material is essentially a collection of layers with certain effects applied to them. We're just going to go through these layers and make some adjustments to them. So right down the bottom we have this skin layer which is sort of like the, the base color that's being applied there and we're going to turn off the opacity and that's going to fix that see-through issue there. I'm going to change the tiling from 1.5 to 9 and that's just going to make it a, a fair bit more subtle with those uh, bumps and, and detailing in there. Under the parameters section, I'm going to change my color to a nice mauve. I'm just going to type in specific values from the tutorial notes, but you can change it to whatever color you want. I'm going to come down here and set the invert grain relief from false to true. And dropping down the technical parameters here, I'm going to set the height range from 0.14 to 0.06 and that's just going to make the bumps a little bit more subtle in there. 
So already that's looking really good, but we can still see that we've got these really big uh, sort of veiny details come in here. So I'm going to go onto the veins layer there. I'm going to set the tiling. If I scroll up, I'm going to set the tiling to 2. And under the parameters here, I'm going to set the density to 0 0.17. So this is a really good start for our skin, but very rarely are you going to get the perfect result just from one of the, uh, the starter smart material assets. So we're going to add in some more details and shading to this. Above the creature skin group, I can just close this. We're sort of done with this for now. I'm going to add a new fill layer. And I'm going to call this light gradient. I'm just going to select the color channel in material. So I'm just going to alt left click on color that deselects everything else. And I'm going to set this to a color that's slightly lighter than the base material. I'm then going to right click and add a black mask, which is going to hide it. I'm going to right click again. I'm going to add a generator. And for this generator, I'm going to search for position. So a position generator is going to affect where the mask is applied on the mesh. We can see that under the image inputs, it's using the position and also the world space normals to calculate this. So for our settings, I'm going to set global invert from false to true. I'm going to set the global balance to 0.1. And the global contrast to 0 0.9. And we can see we get this very clear gradient where it goes from our light area and then it just sort of fades off as the mask takes effect. This is a little bit strong, so I'm going to come into the opacity here. I'm going to set this down to 40%. And if we want to refine this, so say we don't want uh, the lighter areas around the nose, we can right click on the light gradient, we can add a paint layer. And we can use a nice soft brush and just paint out the areas of the nose. Let's decrease the size there. And I need to hit X to get to the black mask. And I'm just going to paint that area out there. Okay, so we've got a, a subtle light gradient sort of underneath the head around the, the neck and jaw area. Above light gradient, I'm going to add in a new fill layer. And I'm going to call this one dark gradient. Again, only using the color, so alt left click. And for the color, I'm going to set a color that's slightly darker than the base skin. I'm going to set the layer blending mode from normal, and I'm going to choose multiply. And then I'm going to decrease the opacity here to about 65%. Once again, add a black mask. Add a generator. Choose our position. Set the global balance to 0 0.06. And then the global contrast to 0 0.68. So it's just appearing on top of the head around the crest area. I'm then going to add another layer above the dark gradient. So fill layer. And this one I'm going to call edges. Again, I'm going to set the blending mode to multiply and then the opacity to 65%. Just going to select the color channel and I'm going to select this sort of washed out blue color Add a black mask to our edges layer. I'm going to add a generator to the mask. And for this generator, instead of position, I'm going to search for curvature. And add that. I'm going to click on global invert, and that's going to apply the darker color around the curved edges of the mesh. Again, if any areas are appearing too strong, we can right click on our edges mask add a paint layer, 
and then just come in here and softly remove any of those. So we might even want to turn on symmetry and then decrease the flow. So to decrease the flow, the shortcut is control left click and then moving the mouse left and right. And then we'll need to invert that. So hit X so we've got a black brush and that's even probably a bit too strong. So let's uh, reduce the flow even more. So control left click, move it to the left and then just sort of subtly paint out some of the, uh, the stronger areas. But we can see that this curvature mask is providing a fair bit more definition to areas of our mesh. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more detail to the crest area. So once again, we're going to add a new layer. And I'm going to call this one crest color. And once again, we're only using the color. And we're going to set this to a light blue. Add a black mask to it. And here we're going to manually paint in the, the details that we want. So I'm going to go into the brushes here. And I want to find a brush with a, a fair bit of variation. So one of the dirt brushes is probably going to give us that. So I'm going to select dirt one. So we're going to come into the crest area. And I can just paint on this. I think it's a little bit too strong. So again, we'll just uh, reduce the flow amount. Control left click, move to the left. And so let's just create this sort of random variation of, of color around the crest area. If we go a little bit too far, we can hold, we can just press X to switch to the, the black and we can just sort of rub away areas as well. And because it's got a low flow, it's also going to subtly reduce areas. We also might want to do a little bit of detailing on the fins as well. So Add a bit of that, uh, that color highlight to the ends down here. If we want to uh, rotate the light of the scene, shift and then right button so we can see that a bit better. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good there. I'm going to add another layer on top of the crest color and I'm going to call this one speckles. Once again, just use the color channel. I'm going to set the color to a really light blue. Add a black mask to it. And the brush I'm going to choose for this one is this uh, dirt spots here. And I'm just going to speckle on some dots. And we'll do it around the fins as well. There's one final layer we're going to add, and that's for the lips. So we'll add a new fill layer. Call this one lips. We're going to be using the color and also the roughness for this one. So the color is going to be a light pink. And the roughness, we're going to leave it a low value of 0 0.3, so they look a little bit sort of shinier and wetter. Of course, I'm going to add a black mask to it. And we want our brush back to what it was before. So the default shape of the brush is actually under the alphas here. And it is simply called shape. And it's this one here. So if you select that, you're going to get the rounded brush again but it hasn't actually reset the brush settings. We can see that we've got this sort of like randomness in size and opacity that is being carried across from the dirt brush. So I'm just gonna click on this drop down here and go apply default brush. And now we're back to the regular default brush there. And now I'm just gonna paint on the lip color.
and I'm then going to change the blending mode from normal to multiply and I'll just reduce that strength a little bit to about 80% like so and we can just turn the symmetry off and that's looking pretty good so that is the skin done so I'm going to hide that folder there or close that folder and now I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call this one eyes I'm going to select the little box the geometry mask now I'm going to alt click on the head and then select the eyes as well and then click back on the group um, I'm not going to be applying the eye material to the head itself but it is nice just to be able to visualize the head whilst we're working on the eyes I'm going to create another group inside of the eyes I'm going to call this eyes mask and we're going to add a black mask to that group then going to add a fill layer to that group in there I'm going to call this face color we're going to use the color and roughness for this one we're going to set the color to a dark purple and the roughness we're going to bring down all the way to about 0 0.1 so it's really nice and shiny for the eye mask mask we're going to select that and we're going to go to our polygon fill tool there we'll select mesh fill and then we're just going to click on the eye and that'll mask in the eye there like so so we can see that they're nice and shiny with that base color we've got this uh, deep purple color for the eyes we're going to add a fill layer above the base color and we're going to call this one veins we're just going to be using the color channel and we're going to set it to a light purple color and then we're really going to bring down the opacity to about 20% We're going to add a black mask to the veins. We're then going to add a fill effect down here. And a fill effect essentially allows you to use black and white images as masks. So for that image, we're going to select the grayscale button here. And we're going to search for marble fine. We're going to increase the tiling up to 32. And that's going to create a really easy veiny effect for the eyes there. We're going to add one more fill layer above the veins. And we're going to call this one specs. Just going to use the color and change it to a light blue. We're going to reduce the opacity to about 70%. Add in our black mask. And again, we're going to use a spotty brush to paint on some speckled details. So, selecting our brush, I'm just going to clear our search here. Then, I'm going to go to our brushes and I'm going to use this dirt spots again. And I'm just going to paint on until I get a look that I like. And that is going to do us for the head and eyes. So next thing we're going to tackle is the body and armor. So let's just close the eyes folder. And we'll just select one of these other layers so we can see all of our geometry. And the first part I'm going to work on is this sort of under armor beneath all of the sort of hard surface armor pieces. These sort of like more organic soft surface cloth type material beneath them. So let's add a new group and we're going to call this one Under Armour and I'm going to set the mask just to the body so Alt left click on body then I'm going to jump to my smart materials here and I'm going to find a material called plastic hexagon 
So instead of dragging and dropping the plastic armor underneath our Under Armour folder, what we can do instead is if we hold down control, left click and drag, we get all of our colors pop up here. And I'm going to drop it onto the green color to where I want the Under Armour to go. I'm going to drag this into the Under Armour folder. And there we go, it's only applied it to that ID map. And we can see that we've got a mask automatically set up and we automatically have a color selection set up as well. We're going to change some of the settings of our smart material. So let's open up the plastic hexagon here and go into our base plastic. We're going to set the color to a light blue. We're going to reduce the opacity of the fill effect even further. So we're going to set this down to 10%. We're going to select this fill effect. And I'm going to change the projection from UV projection and I'm going to change it to triplanar. So UV projection is currently using our UV map to project the material onto the body. So if we have a little bit of a zoom in, we can see that we have obvious scenes where we've made cuts on our geometry to unfold it. Setting the projection from UV to triplanar that is going to project it from three dimensions and it's going to try to fade those um, those seam lines between each of the different parts. Obviously it's not going to be perfect, um, particularly with quite a, a complex pattern on our material here, but it's going to do a better job than having really harsh lines uh, around the body. I'm also going to reduce the tiling of this pattern from 32 and I'm going to type in 50. Above our base plastic, I'm going to add a new fill layer, and I'm going to call this one color variation. Just going to use the color channel, right click, add a black mask. And for the color, we're going to add a slightly darker color than our base color. We're going to select our black mask. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to add a fill effect. And for the image, I'm going to type in clouds. Clouds is a really good texture for just random variation. So let's select clouds too. We're gonna to set the tiling here, to maybe something like seven. So we can actually see some of that variation coming through. And that's just gonna add a little bit more visual interest. So it's not just a, a single blanket color. So I'm happy with that for the, uh, the base under armor there. So let's uh, close this folder here. And we're going to create a new group for our cloth pieces. Add a black mask to this. And inside of our group, we'll add a new fill layer. And call this base color. And we're just going to be using the color and roughness values for this. The color is going to be a light bluish gray. And the roughness, we're just going to bring that up to about 0.5. Now we need to mask this in over the cloth there. We don't have an ID map for this, so we have to do it manually. So I'm going to select the black mask, grab our polygon fill tool. And they are uh, their own separate meshes, so we can just uh, click on them each, and that will mask them in. And now I'm just going to clear my search and go to my materials tab here. And I'm going to search for fabric rough aligned and I'm going to drag this above our base color inside the cloth folder. We're going to set the projection from UV to triplanar and we're going to really increase the tiling so that we get a, a small pattern or effect on there and of course we also want to change the color to a light bluish gray as well. We're going to add a mask to the fabric rock and then we're going to add a fill effect. And we're going to choose one of those cloud textures again. So let's choose uh, clouds three. And bring up the tiling to something like nine. So again, we're just getting a little bit of subtle variation in the colors here. I'm going to add a new fill layer above the fabric rough. And I'm going to call this one trim. We're just going to be using the color channel for this. And we're going to use a dark bluish gray color. 
finally add a black mask to the trim layer. So I'm now going to clear my search and go into my brushes now. I'm going to be painting around the outside to create this uh, trim. So let's select something like this uh, hatching paintbrush. And I'm going to come in here, reduce the uh, size of my brush with uh, control, white mouse, move it to the left. And I want to paint on the outsides here. Now it's a little bit tricky because it's going to bleed through onto the other side. So in our brush settings, we're going to change the alignment from tangent wrap, which is going to go through meshes onto meshes behind them. And we're just going to change it to UV. So only the UV shell that we're painting on is going to get that paint. So if I paint on this now in the 3D view, it's not going to bleed across to the other side. Alternatively, we could just paint on the edges in our UV map here, which is possibly going to be a bit easier as well. I'm just going to come in here, left click and drag around the outside. And one more thing we probably should do to save us some time is also turn on the symmetry. And let's do the front clock as well. Oops, and that's come across to the other side for some reason. Sometimes the symmetry doesn't play very nicely with the UV projection mode. Okay, we're going to add one final fill layer now. And we're going to call this one Edgeware. Once again, just using the color. We're going to set this to something a bit darker than the base color. And we'll add a black mask. We're going to add a generator to the black mask. And this one, we're going to search for metal edge wear. And this is going to nicely scuff up the edges of the mesh and add a bit of a wear and detail to it. We can adjust the wear level and wear contrast. So I'm going to increase the wear level just a little bit and then decrease the, uh, the contrast there. And I think that gives it a nice little bit of extra detail. Looks like I've also forgotten to uh, add my cloth material to the, the bit of cloth above it. So I'm just going to come in here, select my mask, grab my polygon fill and just uh, click on that one there. We can see all the effects have come through. We just need to paint on the outline there. So I'll go to my trim and paint that on now. Okay, and we're going to leave the cloth there for now. We'll add some uh, little details a bit later on though. Now it's time to move on to the armor details. So let's close down the, the cloth folder there. And we're going to take a look in the Smart Materials tab. And we're going to search for a steel painted rough damaged. And I'm going to add this one to the bottoms of the, uh, the feet for now. So I'm going to hold down Control, left click and drag, and I'm going to dump it on this purple color here. And again, that's automatically added a mask with a color selection just for that part of the uh, the armor there. We can manually add this armor to the other pieces later. And I'm going to rename this to Armor Blue. And I'm going to open up our folder here and I'm going to find the base color. And I'm going to set this to a light blue color. I'm then going to go to the metallic paint layer. And I'm going to change this color to a light bluish purple. Okay, I'm going to come back into the starter materials here. And I'm going to search for a steel bright blade. And I'm going to drag and drop this on top of the uh, metallic plate inside of the armor blue still. And this is going to be used for some additional edge wear and scratching. I'm going to add a black mask to our steel bright. 
and I'm going to add a generator with a metal edge wear. Let's increase the wear level a bit and then decrease the contrast a little bit. And if this is looking a little bit strong around some of the edges, we can dig into the, the folder here, come to the bright edges layer here, and we could adjust the, the height value. And also the scratches layer height to Then just close that folder there. We can also close the other blue folder. And I'm going to add a paint layer to the mask. And then just use the polygon fill tool to select the other pieces of armor which I want to have the blue color. Don't forget to change the fill mode to whatever's going to be most appropriate to select those pieces. You can also turn on the symmetry tool or the, uh, the polygon fill tool as well. For the capsule, I'm going to have to manually paint this in, so I'm going to select my default brush again called Shape and just reset the settings there. So this is quite a small detail, so it's going to be a little bit sort of pixelated here. And there's really only so much cleanup we can do for this little piece here because it is so small. Okay, that's going to do for now. Now, if there's any areas of the mesh uh, which are really quite curved, they're going to have a lot of this uh, steel bright layered on there because of the metal edge wear. So this here for example and also this bit um, around the, the neck here. So if we don't want this steel bright to be to be pairing in these places we can right click on the steel bright black mask and we can add a paint layer and then we'll just manually paint out those areas. So again we might want to get a pretty sort of rough brush maybe even something like the, the dirt brush and just sort of paint away that edge where so we get that blue color back okay so i think that's all of the blue armor details done we can always come back later if we have missed anything let's close up that armor blue folder there and we're going to come into our smart materials once again and we're going to search for a plastic armor, armor simple. And let's just go back down to the, uh, the boots. We've got our ID maps and I'm going to hold down control, left click and drag, and I'm going to dump it onto the, the red area. And we're going to rename this group to armor white. Opening up our armor white folder and our base plastic armor here, we're going to change our two colors to a white. And now we're going to select the scratches layer in our armor white here. Going to go to the metal edge wear generator there. And we're just going to play around with the uh, the wear contrast. Let's bring that down a bit. Now 
think something like that looks a bit nicer. And we want our bright metal edgeware applied to this bit of armor as well. But because I've already made it, we can just duplicate it. So inside of our armor blue, we can grab our steel bright layer. We can hit Control D to duplicate it. And then I'm just going to move this copy up and under the armor white there. We can close that armor blue now. And now we have those uh, bright steel scratches on top of our white armor too. And now we've just got to select the areas where we have our white armor details. So we'll go to our polygon fill tool again. And mask them in. Making sure to be on the armor white mask there. And of course we also want our paint effect in there too so we can actually mask it in. Just gonna fill in this uh, this whole little capsule here as white, and then I'm just gonna drag the uh, the armor white beneath the armor blue. Okay, I think that's all of the pieces. We can always come back if we did miss anything though. So that's the main armor pieces done. Still a couple more materials we need to create a little bit of a sort of contrast or highlight materials. So once again, I'm gonna search for my steel bright. Just gonna control, drag and drop that onto the little ankle detail down here. There. Let's add a paint effect here and mask in any areas that we want. We'll add it to the, the crest and the sort of mouth plate there. Just realize we are missed a little bit underneath for our armor white. Let's add that in there. Jump back to the steel bright. And there's a little bit of cleanup we want with some of these, so we can always go to the um so we can always open up the folder here and grab our bright edges. So this is what's creating these parts here. So let's add a paint effect to that. Grab our brush. And we can just paint out those areas. Do I come down to the, the toes here? I want to clean this up a little bit. This one's being affected by the white armor here. So we're going to have to close that one up and open up the armor white and the steel bright and grab the paint in there. And that bit of the material is being affected under armor white and it's going to be the scratches, no. The bright edges, no. Face color, no. Where is it? Scratches, there. So let's jump in here, add a paint effect, and we can just bring those down a little bit as well. And I should have turned symmetry on for all of that, because now I have to do the other side. And I kind of want these like steel toed caps to the boots, so let's hide all that armor white, go up to the steel bright, go to our paint, and let's just grab 
our default brush again. And reset that. And we want a nice hard edge. Clearly this is still being affected by some of the other materials, so I'll come back here and have to uh, erase some of those. Jump in here, go to our bright edges, and just paint those out. Okay, I think that's looking good for the toes there. We want another smart material. So I'm going to search for rubber, and I'm going to drag rubber dry on top of our layers here. And then just add a black mask to that. And let's paint in the areas where we want the rubber. And let the rubber to the bottom of the feet as well. Maybe I'll just create a, a nice straight line here. So if I just click once, Alt Shift, click down over there. Again, using Shift to create nice straight lines. That's the feet looking pretty good. Might also want to add a little bit of rubber detail around where the, the fins are protruding from the, uh, the Under Armour. And also up here around the top. This is also quite a convenient way to hide any seams that we have. Okay, looking good. We still want one more material for the backpack. So I'm gonna use the, the plastic armor again. So plastic armor, simple. Where is it there? Drag it up there. Add a mask. And let's just grab the, uh, the main bit of the backpack. Okay, it's coming along nicely. Just one more major material which we need to create, and that is for the, the visor lenses. So in my smart materials, I'm going to search for aluminium anodized red. Drag that on top there. I'll then add a black mask. Use the polygon fill tool. And I'm just going to mask in the lenses of the helmet. Going to drop this down and under the, the base color here, I'm going to change this to a purple color. Which fits nicely with our color scheme. And then inside of our aluminium uh, group here, I'm going to add a new fill layer and bring that on top of everything. I'm going to call this hexagon. We're going to add a black mask. And for this layout, we're going to be using the height and roughness, but not the color. The height, I'm going to pop up to 0 0.002. And for the roughness, I'm just going to bring that up slightly to 0 0.4. And we're going to add a fill effect to the mask. So add fill there. 
And then for the image, we're going to search for hexagon branch. This one, which is quite a cool pattern. Then we're going to need to bump up the tiling a lot to something like 50. And now we get this cool hexagon grid pattern uh, on the lenses there. Awesome. So that is all of the main materials done. All of the colors uh, are in. Um, now it's just time to add in some more detailing to the character. There is a number of alphas that come default in Substance Painter. So if we go to our alphas here and have a scroll through and all of the different patterns that you can stamp onto your character. This is like stamping on the details when we were doing sculpting. They can also use these same images. They've just got to be black and white. So white is going to reveal areas, black will hide areas, and then levels of gray in between will be partially transparent. And we can just stamp these onto masks. So let's create a new fill layer above everything else. And I'm going to call this white round decals. We want the color, height, roughness, and metalness. So let's turn these bottom four off. The base color, that can remain something sort of uh, uh, white like that. The height, we want this to be indented a little bit. So we're going to go minus 0 0.035. The roughness, we're going to bring down even lower. So it's a little bit shinier, 0 0.25. And then metallic, we're going to leave that at zero. So this is a non-metal color. We can then add our black mask. And we'll get to our brush here. And I'm going to go into the alphas here. And I'm just going to grab my default round shape for now. I'm going to go shape. And I'm going to bump up the size a little bit. And also give it really hard edges. So control right click and then move the mouse up. And then I can just left click and I create these little circle details in there. And then for another detail, let's grab this uh, shape capsule here. Increase the size again, make sure it's got nice hard edges. Uh, control left click and then move the mouse up and down to rotate it. Uh, I've got some cool little details in there. Um, I'm going to add another layer for some metal details. So let's add a new fill. Let's call this one metal details. Again, color, height, roughness, metalness. Turn off these bottom four. For the color, we're going to leave it at a whitish gray. For the height, we're going to pull this out of the mesh instead of indenting it in. So we're going to go. 0 0.05. The roughness will leave at 0 0.3 and the metalness we're going to bring all the way up to 1. Let's grab our shape again. We'll add a black mask and we'll just start stamping on our little round details. And let's just increase the hardness a little bit. And these can sort of represent little bolts or something that are holding the pieces of armor together. And let's come around to the backpack and add a few of these little bolts around there. And maybe some of these details around the arms.
and maybe some little bolts around here to holding the rubber pieces to the Under Armour. Okay, I'm liking the little metal details now. I want to add a new metal decal layer that goes inwards, so I'm going to duplicate the existing one with Control D. Let's go metal details, and let's go indented. We'll clear the mask, so we'll right click, and we can either go add black mask, or we can go clear mask, either or is going to work. We'll then come into the settings for the height, and go minus. 0.05 using the uh, default shape brush here so let's uh, click on the mask make sure we've got our shape selected make it a little bit smaller gonna click once hold shift left click again and we're going to create these straight lines so we're going to create this sort of uh, plate look on the armor there And we'll go something like that. Okay, let's add one final detail now, and that is going to be our own custom alphas. So I've got three images here, which I've just made in, in Photoshop, just using simple vector graphics. And these are all sort of medical insignia, so it's going to emphasize the point that our character is the medic. And I'm just going to grab all three of these and drag and drop them into Substance Painter. In the Import Resources window, we have to define what they are. So for all three of these, I'm gonna click on the undefined and I'm gonna choose alpha. So that's just gonna tell Substance what to store them as. Now down the bottom, we have an import your resources to, and I'm gonna drop that down. There's three options here. We have current session. If we choose this option, then as soon as we close Substance Painter, all of these alphas are going to be deleted and, and lost. If we choose the current project, that means these images are always going to be available in this particular project. And then finally, if we go library, that means these assets are going to be avail available to you. No matter what project you're working on, they're going to be stored on your computer somewhere. I'm just going to choose the current project though and click on import. And we should have our alphas imported inside of our alphas library. So let's create a new folder and call this insignia. We'll create a new fill layer, and let's call this star. We'll add a black mask. And we want to use the color, roughness, and metalness. So the color is going to be a blue. The roughness can stay at 0 0.3, and then the metalness can stay at 0. Let's grab the mask. Grab the brush, and I'm going to select the other uh, star of life here. And we'll turn our symmetry off for this one. And we'll make it nice and big, and then just uh, rotate it around. Try to get it nice and straight, and then just stamp it on there. We'll then grab our rod of Asclepius, uh, the, the snake wrapped around the staff. And we're going to switch to black. This is upside down, so it's going to rotate it around. And then we'll just mask it out of the star there. Let's create another fill layer for the cross now. Color, roughness, metalness. Base color, let's set this to a nice red. And at our mask, we will want the. Uh, we don't need the symmetry turned on to this one because the shoulder plates are using the same UV shell. Let's grab the cross here and stamp that on. I want another layer underneath this, which is just going to be a white. So let's go cross outline for the name. And we can just go color, roughness, metalness, leave that all the same, add a black mask. 
just going to clear the imported resources search there. We'll go to our alphas. And I want to search for a rectangle brush. So square rectangle here. And let's just uh, paint the outline. And let's uh, make this a nice bright white. Maybe a bit bigger actually. Okay, something like that. So we've got some pretty neat symbols stamped onto the character's armor, um, but they look very fresh. It's like they've just been freshly painted on. We want to add a little bit of wear and tear to it and rough up the edges. So let's grab the insignia folder here and we'll add a white mask. So as opposed to our black masks, which has been covering everything up and then we've been revealing things, we're going to add a white mask, which reveals everything to start with, and then we chip away at it. Let's go to our brushes and we're going to use a dirt brush here. And we're just going to uh, chip away at the edges, rougher it up, make it look like it's not completely new and shiny. And that's just going to blend it in with the rest of the armor uh, a fair bit nicer. Okay, something like that. Moving on to one final step. I want to add a grunge or a dirt layer over the top of the entire character. Again, this is sort of going to blend everything in together a bit nicer, make everything look a bit more worn and damaged. So on top of everything, let's add a final fill layer and call it dirt. I'm going to use the base color, the roughness and the metalness. The base color, I'm going to make it a dirty brown. For the roughness, if we have a low value, it's going to look a lot more muddy and wet. Whereas if we bring the roughness up, it's going to look more like caked on dirt. So either all is going to work, it just depends on what effect you want to go for. I'm going to go for a more caked on look. Going to add a black mask to dirt. I'm going to add a generator. And I'm going to search for dirt. So two settings we can change here is the dirt level, so how much dirt appears on your character. Let's maybe go uh, 0 0.7. And then the dirt contrast here. So let's just leave that at uh, 0 0.5. Now there's one more cool thing we can do with the dirt. If our character's been walking through muddy or dirty areas, then we want more dirt around the, the base of the feet and up the legs, and then sort of less dirt around the top of the character. So in our dirt, um, so on our dirt mask, I'm going to right click and add another generator. And for this generator, I'm going to search for position. The same one we used for the head. And you can see that it's overriding the dirt beneath it. So instead of overriding it, I'm going to combine it. So this, so this overlay, I'm going to set to linear dodge add. And obviously this is the wrong way around. There's too much dirt on the head and uh, very little on the, the feet. So I'm going to go global invert, true. And now we can just play around with the, the balance, blur and contrast to get the, the amount of dirt that we want on each area. We can also reduce the opacity of this particular effect as well if we want less dirt. And that is our character pretty much done. Of course, we could keep refining this and adding more details, but as you can see in a relatively short amount of time, you can achieve really good results due to the power of Substance Painter's tools. Of course, you could spend additional time tweaking and adding additional detailing, but this is where we stop now in terms of texturing. From here, we want to export our textures in a number of images that we can bring into Blender and place onto our model's material. These textures will also get imported into our game engine and used for our final render in Blender. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful. You can check out our Patreon link in the description for a variety of rewards such as starting files, tutorial notes, and early access to the rest of the series. And I'll see you on the next one.